Spotted mood has changed to me never before. Has someone been more unforgettable in every way? And forever more. What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. For those of you here in the chapel with us uh, are, that are giving tributes, I'm going to ask that you please give your tributes from the mic at the lower stage. Um, there are wipes there that you can wipe off the mic in between, but anyone giving a tribute here in the chapel today, if you can give it from the lower stage, please. Thank you. Hello? Okay. Uh, I'm going to wait for Sherry. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming today, considering we're in a pandemic and it's freezing cold. Uh, my family and I appreciate how many of you have come to support us during this very difficult time. We're here to honor a very, very special person. Many of you knew him as Papa Sang, Mr. Sang, or Hammer, but I called him Daddy. My dad was 90 years, five months, and six days old. Let that sink in for a moment. He was less than 10 years shy of living an entire century. How many people can say that? How many people nowadays live that long? So we were blessed to have him with us for that long. I cherish every moment that we had. As you all know, my dad was pretty strong. He had to be to have lived so long. In my wildest dreams, I would hope he would live forever. Or at least I'll live me, but that's not reality. Over the last few years, as my dad's mental and physical health declined, you could say it kind of gave me time to prepare for this day. 
But as I stand before you today, I still don't feel ready to say goodbye. I want to acknowledge one thing. My dad had many, many, many friends. Uh, his friends are really his family, all my uncles that live here. People he went to school with as a young child who he later worked with in the Taiwanese Air Force. They were all just as old as my dad. They are 90 plus years old. Therefore, they're at risk and afraid of COVID. Many live in Scarborough on the East End and many don't have wonderful daughters like me and my cousin Marilyn who just walked in uh, to show for them around. Um, although their physical presence is missing, I know their thoughts and prayers are with my dad and us. They loved him just the same. Before I invite Reverend Lamb up for the opening prayer, I want to thank you all again for coming and joining me to remember an extraordinary father and grandfather. So Reverend Lamb. Thank you, Susie. I would like to begin the service, the funeral service, with a prayer. And I'll be saying the prayer in English and also Mandarin. For those who are able, will you please stand? 要是能够站起来,请站起来。我们先来开始祷告. Oh God, our Creator and Redeemer, we are so grateful that you have made us all in your own image, given us gifts and talents. Today, O oh Lord, is a very difficult time as we come into your presence to remember the late Mr. Chui Xiang Zeng, and we all call him Hammer, because we love to call him Hammer. Oh Lord God, thank you for all the years we share with Hammer. We lift him to you today, O oh Lord, in honor of the good we saw in him and the love we felt from him. 我们的神啊，创造宇宙的神啊，我们的拯救主，我们感谢你，因为你创造我们是按照你的形象来创造的。你还给我们恩赐、才华。今天是个非常痛苦的时间日子，因为我们来到你的同在的里面，来怀念我
Uh, hello? Okay, okay. This story is about my gong gong. He would always take us to his favorite dim sum restaurant. We would walk, he would walk in like he owned the place. There would be big lineups and he would walk right past everyone. He would always try to find an empty table and when he did, he would call us over. I would all, I, I was always scared we would get kicked out and get kicked out and people would get mad at us. He didn't, he didn't care. When we sat down at the table, the manager would always come over and say hi, and they would talk in Chinese. He, he would place his order and always get our favorite foods. I liked going because I got to spend time with him. When going, I promise I'll get straight A's in school and go to university. I need Gong Gong. I would like to share a story about my gong gong. One night I was playing on the PlayStation and my, my grandfather calls me over to move his heater because every night I basically do it. I usually go back on the PlayStation, but this time he said, thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me move my heater. I love you so much. You're my favorite gan- grandson. And in that moment, that didn't mean that much to me. But now when I look back at it, it means so much. I just have a little poem. He has achieved success, who has lived, he, sorry. (laughs) Who has lived well, laughed often, loved much, who has enjoyed the trust of pure women, the respect and intelligence of men, and the love of little children, who has filled and accomplished his task in the world, who has left the world better than he found it, whether by improved poppy, a favorite poem, a rescued soul, who has never lacked in appreciation of the, le- the earth's beauty or failed to express it, who has always lo- looked for the best in others and given the best he had, whose life was inspir- inspirational and whose memory is dedication. Afternoon, everybody. Um, I just want to say a little thing about Papa, Gong, Papa Sang. As he said, he was 90 years old. He lived an amazing life. You know, he's half my age. You know, I wish to be live that long, see the see the world, travel the world. You know, he used to wake up every day, do his routine, do his exercises. You hear him in his room: one, two, one, two, stretching, do the stretching, one, two, one, two. Every day he used to do that. You know, me and Susie go be downstairs working out. He used to come over. He used to come over, and he would like try to work out with us. And Susie would, Susie was not, not having that. She'd go say, "Daddy, go and sit down." In his loud, her loud voice. You know, Papa Sang used to always talk about his his days in the Air Force as being a major. He used to talk for hours and hours about being a major in the Air Force. He used to love being that. He was so proud and so happy of himself being in the Air Force. He's so proud, he was always proud of his loving wife and his two kids, and especially love his, brown, his grandkids. He also always say, I love my grandkids. Gung loves you so much. Gung loves you so much to each and every one of them. He was so proud of that. All I gotta say, I'm so proud to say I'm, I know Papa Sang for so long. being part of my life. Not for long, but long enough. He's been a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a great friend. He should surely be missed and very loved. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, with a uh, session for open mic, meaning that if you would like to say a few words, please, uh, you're welcome to come up here. And the maximum time is two minutes per person. So you can speak uh, in English or in Chinese. Uh, 各位亲友们,现在呢,我们是让各位宾客可以到前面来讲几句话,怀念Hammer. 
，所以呢，要是你要的话，你可以到前面来用中文的、英文的都可以，每一位呢能用最多两分钟。So、uh, we'll just wait to see、uh, who like to come come up and say a few words. Please don't be shy. Good morning, everybody.、Um, what do I say about a man that has truly only been in our lives for about 16 years? That you and Jason been together? Mr. Sang made such an impact on each and every person that came into his life. The funniest time that I can remember. Is when I call him Twinkle Toes because he could dance. <laughs> he would always, always love to dance. I respected him as a father and a man. He embraced us so openly and so lovingly, which I could never have expected. So I just wanted to read this little poem for Papa Sang. Into who I called Daddy Sang. Grandpa's gone to heaven. One quiet day, the angels came and took Grandpa far away. But in the stillness of the night, I could almost hear him say, "Dear grandchildren, I will miss you. You mean so much to me. But Jesus called me to His side. In heaven, I will be a place of God's great beauty." No tears or earthly cares, only peace and joy forever, and love beyond compare. To Jalen, Jubi, Jordan, and Shade, remember all the good times. Don't think about the sad. Treasure all the special moments through the years we've always had. And if you trust in Jesus, I can promise this and more. You will get a big hug from Grandpa someday on heaven's golden shore. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Katrina. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Papa Sang is definitely looking down at everyone smiling right now. So I was Papa Sang's caregiver. Oh my gosh! So I was his caregiver. It was nothing but a blessing to work with Susie and Slade and Mama Sang. Every morning, I'd walk in and I'd say the same thing to him, and he'd say the same thing back to me. I'd say, "Morning, Papa, saying how you doing?" And he'd say, "Ah, still alive." Right? Oh God. He loved his grandson so much. He loved them so much. We'd go outside. He'd watch them swim. Take bike, take bike rides. Play basketball. He loved listening to music. Me and him would dance on the sidewalk in front of the house to his favorite songs. He loved going back. We would go back to the old Rexdale house, and he'd give he'd give me the grand tour. He'd be like, "This is Susie's room. This is Swain's room. This is the school that they used to go to when they were kids." He loved that house so much, and he he was.、So <sighs> We'd go to Dollarama, and he'd whisper in my ear the same thing every time. Wow, this is a good store. <laughs> One dollar, two dollars. This is a good store, and I'd be like, I know, right? He'd buy his lottery tickets, and he'd say, "Trina, do you want one?" And I'd say, "No, I'm okay." And he'd say, 
if you never play, you're never going to win, you know. But his all-time favorite, favorite, favorite place, the bank. <laughs> I never seen someone so excited to go to CIBC. He would say hello to every single teller. Hey, how you doing? How's your family? He would say to them. He'd walk up to the teller and he would say, give me $500. And I'd be like, we're only going to Dollarama. What do you need $500 for? And he'd say, oh, he, I have to give it to the boys. I have to give it to the boys. We'd go from doctor's visits to dentist visits, eye appointments, foot appointments, blood work, and of course, dialysis. His family always made sure that he was well, well taken care of. But we'd always end our visits over junior chicken sandwiches, french fries, and a small Coke at McDonald's. It was like our guilty pleasure. Papa sang. Although I won't hear you say, still alive anymore, you will always be alive in here. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have time, so please uh, feel free to come up. Uh, we so you can come up, please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Marilyn. As Susie says, I'm her support, her cousin. I've known Zen Susu, Uncle Zen, before he was married. We, my father and Zen Susu were in the Air Force Academy together since they were kids, teenagers. So they've known each other their whole lives. They supported each other. There's quite a big community in Toronto but slowly, one after the other, they're leaving. And my dad is still here, but you know, it's very hard on him. He wanted to come, but he's 92, so I said it's best that he doesn't. But on behalf of everybody, the whole Air Force community, all the families, we wanna say goodbye. And I wanna treasure all the times we had. Zeng Ayi, I've known her the whole time she's been in Toronto, and I've seen Swing, Born, Susie, change their diapers. <laughs> so he was a wonderful, wonderful man, and he is definitely very, very loving to everyone. And I'm here, Susie, anytime you need. And then I, we will see him again. Yeah, thank you. Hey everyone. I also was one of Mr. Sang caregiver. He was a very, very loving person. We always go to Mandarin and say, let's go to Mandarin and eat. And we go to Mandarin. You go to Tim Horton and say, we have to buy Tim Bits for the boys. And we all buy Tim Bits. He's a very, very loving person. He's very compassionate about what he used to do, his work, at his workplace where he used to go, all the places he used to go, go swimming and all those places. He's very kind, very kind. When I say, Mr. Sang, how are you? I'm still alive. And he always say, I'm doing my exercise. I'm doing exercise, exercise. I don't have to go to the gym, but I can go my, do my exercise myself. I said, that's very nice. That's very nice. He's very nice. And may, may his soul rest in peace. Have a great day. Hello everybody, my name is Priscilla, and <clears throat> some memories I have of Mr. Sang. We had to be 13, 14 years old the first time I met him. <clears throat> I'll premise this with, this was a man raising two children in Rexdale, <laughs> and we got into so many circumstances with the K-car, <laughs> different events all over the place, coming in late nights, and I never once saw this man raise his voice. He never got uncomfortable. I don't even think I've seen him angry. That is such a testament to the level of inner peace he had. 
He was so big on education, so proud. When Susie and I graduated university, graduated high school, Martin Grove, of course, Susie was on the honor roll. <laughs> she got her studiousness from him. She would sit there in the cafeteria at Martin Grove with her back in a perfectly straight line, <laughs> studying constantly while everyone else was playing dominoes, honestly, just messing around. And I remember when I got into real estate, he insisted on giving me this gigantic real estate book that was like this, it was like an encyclopedia. I'm like, we're online, we don't really do that anymore. And he was like, no, 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 you gotta come take the book. And he had a massive book collection in his basement. And honestly, I don't know anyone in the room that's even read probably half those books. Everyone's been talking about how much he exercised. This man was swimming, 80 at least, still at the community center, but with balance, because he would go and have a Whopper at Burger King right after, so <laughs> balance. But, um, I think more than anything, it is really his, his calmness, and this has got to be the reason he lived as long as he even did, um, again, with two good children in Rexdale. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we still have time for one or two persons who would like to come in, say, a couple of minutes, one minute or two minutes. Reflection upon the hammer. Uh, uh, Good morning. Um, I was Mr. Tang's caregiver. I learned a lot from him for the time that I was with him. Um, very grateful um, to have been accepted by the Tang family to care for him. Um, I remember when I am working out and I'm doing my squats, sometimes on my break, he'll um, look at me, maybe I'm doing like 150 squats, and then he'll stop, and he'll say he wants to do it too, you know? Um, when he's walking, I'll be like, can you slow down? I can't keep up with you, you know? It's like he's like speed racing, you know. Um, and when I was going to purchase my house, he kept pushing me. He told me, you have to keep fighting. You have to, keep, you have to make sure. You have to make sure. And, part, and it's crazy because I went on a road, you know, I always go, go on the road with him all the time. And he said he wants to show me his first house. And he said... Back then, he couldn't afford a house with a garage, but come and see, come and see. And we went there, and I couldn't open the, the locker. And I kept calling Susie, like, he really wants me to see the house. You know, we have to go inside. <laughs> and we went inside, and he said, you see? So this is what I want you to do, you know? And the first day I closed on my house, first time home buyer, I cried, because I remembered his, um, his push, he's a fighter, and he pushes. And I just learned a lot from your dad, and I'm so grateful. And I, he loved all of you guys. I was very proud of you guys so much. Your mom, your brother, you, the kids, the grandkids, he was so proud of you guys. He talked about you guys all the time over and over again. So if there's only one thing I learned from him is like to be strong, keep pushing, times get hard. He would, he would always overhear my conversations with my kids, fighting them to go to school, my oldest. He's a strong man. And that's what I'll always remember from him.
Do we have one more? Uh, maybe there's someone who uh, feels that uh, he or she must come and say, say a few words at this time, and that will be the last person. Uh, we have another person. All right. Thank you so much for those who have come up to share your beautiful thoughts um, about and of Hammer. Your sharings, your thoughts have enriched all of us. Thank you so much. At this time, we will have another musical interlude, I Love You More Than I Can Say. And afterwards, Susie and Swain will come up and share with us the eulogy. Please.
My dad was a proud man, proud of his diverse experience, education, work ethic, accomplishments, dancing skills, friends, and his family. He was most proud of his grandchildren. As proud as he was, no one was more proud of my dad than me. To grow up the way he did was tough in many ways. So to look back, understand where he came from, where he ended up, to make sure his family had a bright future and had nothing to worry about is an extraordinary accomplishment. My dad was 90 years old per legal Canadian documentation. And that's a goat in the Chinese zodiac. But I'm compelled to tell you, because I know he's standing beside me telling me to correct myself, is that he was actually 92 and born in the year 1929, which is the year of the snake. Years ago, his sister in China told him that his documentation was wrong. That's all he needed to hear. He would then, from then on, he would tell people he was older. And then to make it more confusing, while most people around the world, uh, age at birth is zero, the Chinese actually start at number one. So once you're born, you're in your first year of life, you're one years old, so they add a year. So then my dad would tell people he was three years, three years older than he really was. I can hear him in my ear telling me to make sure that you all knew he was 93 and not 90. Whether he was 90 or 93, we were blessed to have him with us for so long. Uh, my dad was born in Sindhu, Sichuan, China. He was born in a time when his mother, my grandmother, had her feet binded, which was a Chinese custom. Foot binding was banned in 1912. That's how long ago it was. That's how old my dad was. My grandparents were successful business owners with an establishment that included a restaurant, banquet hall, and hotel. My dad used to always tell me stories about how he remembered so many people and events there. My, my dad's parents died when he was young, leaving him and his older sister. His uncle and aunt took them in and raised them as their own. Their daughter, his cousin, became a younger sister to him. At the age of around 11, it was customary for young boys to leave their homes and join the Taiwanese Air, Air Force Academy. He did, and he never saw his parents again, and his older sister until 1986. Can you imagine going through the most important, most vulnerable period of your life and development without your parents or your siblings? My dad was a soldier. I couldn't do that myself. But it was in the Air Force he made a new family. All his friends he grew up with, went to school with, worked in the Air Force with, they had all left their families too, just like my uncle Ching Su Su, and they became each other's family. So the many uncles I have here in Toronto, they all grew up together. They're a tight group, and I know that they're deeply saddened by his passing. As an officer in the Air Force, my dad was a translator, very fitting given his strong English language skills. Preparing for this, usually I reread some of the things that he had written or typed on his typewriter. He was so articulate, I bet, as would he, that he could write better than any of us in this room who are Canadian-born. He was that good. After my dad quit the Air Force, he worked for Admiral Overseas Corporation, American company in Taipei for two years, and then China Airlines for two and a half. In 1968, he moved to the U.S. to advance his studies. In 1974, he completed his MBA, moved to Canada, married my mom on, my, my mom on September 5th, 1974. In 1975, he had Swain, and then three years later, at the age of 47, his million dollar family is complete with me. <laughs> That's all you need, just me. <laughs> I have so many fond memories of, of my dad when I was little. He was always reading something or buying books. His collections of books was in the thousands. We would go to the Albion Library a few times a week and stay for hours on end. He would be in the adult section reading, and I'd be in the kids' area doing my homework. Like, that was one of our shared joys. As a little girl, I remember always going on roller coasters, rides with him. Swain and my mom never liked those rides, so it was always me and my dad. After a long day at the park, I would cry and whine for my dad to carry me around. And I was pretty plump. I was a little heavy. <laughs> At the time, I didn't realize that he was in his mid-50s by then. But you would have never known, so he hated seeing me upset. And he would scoop me up and carry me around. 
I was definitely daddy's little girl in every sense of the word. There would be times when we would get in trouble and we would get licks and yelled at, but not me. I would shed a tear and my dad would just melt. I escaped more slapping from him than swaying, but that's for sure. But don't feel, don't feel bad for Swain, everyone, because he's my mom's favorite to this day. It is what it is. Very well known, right, guys? That's right. You see that? You see that right there? You see that, right? <laughs> we know. <laughs> Education was so important for my dad. We had rabbit ears for TV and had only three channels that came in. And he always would say to us, he refused to get cable because it was so expensive. A small part of me believes that, but I believe they just preferred that we read or studied. If we struggle with something in school, he would just literally give us a textbook or photocopy pages of a textbook and tell us to read it and try to understand it. Then he would try to explain it, and sometimes that would be even more, be more confusing. He would get so impatient if we didn't get it, he would bang his hand on the table and yell at us. Swain got yelled at more, of course. I remember in grade six, I got 96% on my report card. And my, did, my dad didn't pat me on the back. He asked me where the other 4% was. He taught me to strive for, protect, for perfection. My dad always told us how important it was for us to go to university. I looked up to my dad so much and I wanted to make him proud. I would promise as a young girl I would go. At the age of 11, I remember seeing Joey McIntyre from New Kids on the Block wearing a UCLA sweater. I told my dad I want to go to the, that university. You know what he did? He saved up all the money and some in US so that I could go. Just because I told him I wanted to. And that's the kind of dad he was. So poor to me 100%, 100% of the time. As I grew older, I decided to stay close to home so I could take care of him, my mom. My dad always put his family first. He always talked about making sure we had a better future so we wouldn't have to go through the same hardships as he did. All parents want that for their kids. He never spent any money. He never splurged. He never went on vacation. He always paid his bills on time. He always thought about our future. He was always there for me just to talk to, to support me in every single important moment in my life. I could not ask for a better father. He was that magnificent to me and more. My dad was a man of his word. If he said he was gonna do something, he would. And he expected the same commitment and integrity from others. If you said the word promise, you better deliver on all fronts. My dad promised his friend a collection of books from a famous Chinese author. You better believe they're still sitting in his room right now. I tried to donate them, but he would always tell me, I'm saving, I'm saving that for my friend. I told him and I have to give it to him. I don't know which friend it is or if he's still alive. I just know that he lives in the States. And even in death, my dad will make certain that I get this book collection to him. I'm just waiting for his sign. Since he passed away, he's been talking to me without talking to me. <laughs> Things that make, would make people scratch their heads. But knowing my dad, he's just reminding me to do something as he always did. Literally, he was like a broken record. My mom is the same way. I will get to it, I promise dad. <laughs> My dad loves his grandbabies, love being with them, love hearing the noises of their voices. He loved having them as, as his eating partners at McDonald's or ice cream, dim sum, burgers, milkshakes. Every time he saw them, his face would brighten up. He was so proud to tell people he had three grandsons. Proud they were all tall because Chinese people love that. Proud how strong they were. If he didn't see them for a few hours, you better believe he would ask where they were. When they came home, he would always tell them how much he missed them. What I take most from this is that, my, is that they will remember him and, and the, the, the deep love that uh, my, had, my dad had for them. <coughs> you can see in the order of service, each of the boys have a Chinese middle name. Jalen has my dad's first name as his. He was so proud when I told him. I asked my dad to pick middle names for Jibby and Jordan, and he did it with so much love. He researched different characters and their meanings and put a lot of thought into it. It was also important for me to keep my last name, his name, and to include in the boy's last name. I did this so his legacy will live on in them and with them. 
The last few years of my, of my dad's life was special. He finally agreed to move in with me in 2018. It was mentally and emotionally hard for him to leave that house in Rexdale. He loved the area, the home where his most precious memories were made. And he was loved so much by the neighbors. They would help him too. Sometimes they'd cut the grass, just pop in to say hello and make sure he was good. After he moved in with me, he would still make us take him to go see the house. He was so happy I decided not to sell it. I promised dad, I'll continue to take care of your house. My dad's health was pretty stable until recently. In the last few years, he had fallen a few times, broke a few bones, was deemed legally blind in 2017, and then eventually lost his right eye, eyesight this year. His hearing was going. He suffered from Alzheimer's, dementia, kidney disease, just to name a few things. But if you saw him, you would have never, ever known. He was strong. He fought through it all, partly because he's so stubborn. He didn't, he didn't believe you, he could no longer do something that he was used to do it. And the other part of it was because he was so active. He swam every day at Albion Pool for over 20 years. He told me once that he would do over 30 laps a day. I could barely get five in my much smaller pool. If he wasn't swimming, he was walking and walking fast at that. Even in his 80s, I couldn't keep up with him. He loved to dance and do Tai Chi. I mentioned this recently to a few people, but I will share it with you all. As a little girl, I realized my dad was older, and I used to pray. I used to pray to God to have my dad live as long as possible. As I got older, I would pray to God to let my dad live long enough to see me graduate university and meet his grandchildren. In the last few years, I prayed to God that when my dad would pass, it would be painless and peaceful. My prayers were answered. Everything I asked for, I received, and for that, I'm very grateful. My dad lived a long, blessed life. I will also say, every single decision I made for my dad was made with the utmost care and attention on the basis to ensure he was always safe, that he felt safe, that he was comfortable, and as happy as he could be. I never took any decision lightly, and I never took no for an answer when it came to something I knew he would need or want. People always say it takes a village to raise a child. That's true. It, it also takes a village to care for the elderly. And although I was my father's primary caregiver, I had some help, and I want to thank some of those wonderful people today. Sorry, guys. To my PSWs, thank you for caring for my father. Without you, I don't know where I would be or where he would be. Martha, you were the first. I don't know where you are. I can't see you. Oh, where's Martha? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he loved you, and you guys established a wonderful bond and understood each other. You were so good to him. To my wonderful mother-in-law, thank you for helping me when I needed it. Trina, I have no words to express my gratitude. You're my sister. You're one of my very best friends. The very best friend a girl can ask. You offered to help. Always made sure you were available. Took such joy in helping and caring for him. I would always pick things up for him or share ideas to remind me to do things for him. <laughs> Sometimes my dad would get so frustrated, you know, and after a while he, he forgot how to speak English, but he would speak Chinese. But when he was pissed, he would turn around and say to Trina, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. And she would just laugh. She would just laugh it right off. I think that got him even more mad. <laughs> But Trina, oh, you're the kindest, most loving person, honestly. Without you, I don't even know where I would be. Thank you to my cousin Marilyn. She has helped me many times over the, over the years. And she loves my parents so much as it helped me. And she's also helped me honor my father with Chinese traditions. So thank you. <sighs> to 
the best husband in the world. Thank you for loving my parents as your own and helping my dad with anything and everything he needed. When my dad lived on his own, Jason would help my dad with things on a regular. He would go mow the lawn, shovel the snow, drive to Rexville just to change a light bulb or press a single button on his remote so that my dad could watch TV. Jason helped me clean out my dad's house over several times over three to four years. Like he had stuff, he had so many. Even Sean, we drove and do donated like 3,000, 4,000 books one time in, in dad's truck. We had countless garage sales. We'd be getting cussed by my dad for selling all his stuff. Every weekend I would pick up my dad and he'd spend it with us and the kids. My dad would come with us on family outings to Sini, to dinner, to mom and dad's house. Uh, it never bothered Jason and he never complained. But let's not kid ourselves, who doesn't love Jason, right? Like, what's, what's not to love about Jason? <laughs> he was also so proud of him, and he always introduced Jason to everyone as his son. Thanks, Biggs. I could not have helped my dad if I didn't have you to support us. Thank you to my mom. She was always making food for my dad or just in my ear, just chipping away. You gotta do this for your dad, you gotta do that. I'm like, yeah, I got it, mom. Okay, so she cared from a distance, but she would always tell me, whatever your dad wants, make for him. I would always tell my dad, you had your own restaurant here, what do you wanna eat, dad? Every single time for lunch, dinner, what do you wanna eat, dad? For the, po for the most part, every meal, he would get what he wants. He'd place his order, I'd go upstairs, mama Seng would make it, and we bring it right back downstairs for him. And he ate very, very well. Uh, I would also like to thank my brother. In the last couple months, he stepped up to help with my dad. There were scheduling challenges with my PSWs. Jalen got COVID. I got sick. It wasn't confirmed it was COVID. Jason got sick. So the last weeks of December, my brother really helped care for my dad when I had gaps in care. And uh, when I was able to, uh, unable to go myself, so thank you. It's important for me that my dad's goodbye was perfect as possible. So Yost, I messaged you to play a few of my dad's favorite songs, and without hesitation, you agreed. Thank you for helping me make that, you know, add that extra special touch to my dad's service to make it perfect. Reverend Lamb, thank you for support in my father's service. It means a lot to have a final prayer and blessing for him in Chinese. And then lastly, Sherry and the New Haven team. Exceptional job. You made the hardest point period of my life as easy as possible. You know, I called Sherry in December when I wasn't sure if my dad was gonna make it. And her response was, Sue, I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm here whenever you need me. And so moments after my dad passed away, I messaged her and asked her to pick him up as soon as possible because I hated, he hated being by himself and I could not stand the thought of him being alone in the morgue. She was on it. She got him as soon as possible. She kept me up to speed on where he was. It gave, me great, it gave me great comfort to know that he was here with her. Cher, I'm so blessed to have a friend like you. I love you very much. Thank you. Daddy, I can't express the words how much I love you and always will. I know you know how much I do. You are the best father and grandfather anyone can ever ask for. I'm so proud to say you are my dad. I miss your smile. I miss your hugs. I miss the sound of your voice. I miss seeing you every day. I miss everything about you. I know you'll watch over me and the boys. Since you've, been, since you've passed, I've been waiting patiently for you to come visit me in my dreams. So I can tell you I love you. I told the boys that too, that he's gonna come. He'll come see them. Please hurry up. I can't wait to see you again and talk to you. I love you, Daddy.
Good morning, everyone. My name is, my Chinese name is Zhen Su Wei, or Swain in English. My dad was Zhen Sui Xiang, or his nickname, known by all his friends, as Hammer. So I would first like to start thanking my sister, my mom, for planning and organizing this event for my father. A thank you for uh, to the New Haven uh, Funeral Center staff, Sherry, for making this difficult, challenging time as easy as possible, especially for our family. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you to Sifu Asiatic for helping me reach out and find Reverend Lamb for my dad's service because it was very challenging to find an Asian and Mandarin speaking reverend, especially during the pandemic and everything. And Reverend Lamb, thank you for completing this service and my father's rite of passage. It was very important, especially in Mandarin Chinese. Thank you also to all the healthcare workers for assisting my father with his long-term care needs. Trina, you've been my sister's good, good friend. And like my sister, thank you, Martha, all you guys for helping my dad. I'm thankful for all of you that came out today. And those of you that could not be here, that you're actually watching the service through the live stream to celebrate my father's beautiful life. I know some of you have traveled some distance to pay respects, and I, my, I know my father would love seeing everybody here paying respects and being here together. Although it's going to be a very challenging next few days, I want to take this time to remember and honor some special memories I have with my dad. In addition to the things listed in his obituary, personally, he's taught me a lot and to be open minded towards music. He introduced me to uh, Connie Francis, Frank Sinatra, Diana Ross, and Motown, a lot of the old tunes that most of the younger generation won't understand or know about. This led me to become and help me to become like a DJ uh, for a lot of events and uh, at nightclubs when I was younger. Thank you, Dad, for the lessons in ballroom dancing, which I wasn't great at. However, it led me to be more rhythmic while dancing well like he did. Dad, you also showed me, I remember you showed me how to do a full Windsor knot in a tie when I needed to learn how to dress in a suit. At that time, there was no social media, no YouTube that you could Google these services. And those lessons were taught to me by you, no doubt from your Air Force experience. My father brought me up to the love of basketball from the early days throughout the golden years. We always used to love to watch all the games, have Jordan, Magic Johnson, Lakers, even Detroit. And we would converse and discuss about everything, stats, just like how my nephews do right now. When I was younger, my dad even taught me how to tune green hubble bubble bubble gum, which is I think is still available. And he told us, despite my mom not wanting us to chew bubble gum, he told us not to swallow it, despite how good it tastes. <laughs> my, my dad always watched, enjoyed watching old westerns, black and white movies or shows. As you know, especially the ones with 
dancing and music. He loved martial arts and action movies. Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, all this Sylvester Stallone. He brought me up to love the same things. He always said that. When I asked him, why do you always watch like action movies? He said, you don't need to think about much in these action movies. Just enjoy the action, which was no brainer. And that's why he loved them. My dad was a scholar. He's proud of his education while always was willing to strive for more knowledge and to learn as much as possible, whether it be through life or through reading. He stressed education is a huge priority so we can be prepared and knowledgeable to thrive in our futures. He always gave us books and business concepts like management and mathematics. He even gave me a book on business customer service to help me when I open up my store. And I hate mathematics. Not just because we're Asian doesn't mean we all like my th mathematics. <laughs> so to my dad, I love you. Thank you for your consistent love and support, Daddy. In our neighborhood, my dad was well known, loved and respected. Always had a smile on his face, was happy and friendly. He had the same perception in his workplace. Or whenever he went and met new people, as he was very sociable. I cherish all the memories I have of my father. I know he's smiling at all of us. Though I'm heartbroken to no longer have him here physically with us. His memory will forever live on. His spirit will watch over our family to continue to love and guide us. Daddy, I'm grateful and honored to be your son and your firstborn. Thank you for raising me up to be the man that I am today and for always helping me in every way possible. I promise I'll continue to make you as proud as ever. Sorry. Daddy will miss your physical presence as we're no longer able to hug and kiss you. We will forever love you. May you rest in eternal peace. And for, to conclude this, I leave you with this Chinese proverb that my dad would probably love. Life is like a dream and death is like going home. Daddy, we'll all love you. And I'll see you eventually at home. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Susie and Swain, for the very touching reflection, remembering your great and wonderful father, Hema. 谢谢苏西跟 Swain 你们的分享，非常的感动我们，让我们永远的记住，记住曾水祥先生 Hammer 是个伟大而且可爱的父亲。谢谢。Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be sharing. I'll be delivering my sermon, and also saying the family closing prayer in two languages. First in English, and then in Mandarin. And afterwards, I will uh, ask uh, the funeral director to come and lead us in the following time. 各位亲友，我会用英文跟国语来分享我的信息、讲道，然后呢，也为家属做一个祷告。
I pay, I pay great attention to what Susie and Swain had just said in the eulogy. And I can tell that uh, what they have told us or shared us are very close also to my thought. So today, I just would like to deliver a short message on where a person will go to when they pass away. Now, from a Christian perspective, from the Bible, there are two places I'd like to quickly mention. The first place is called paradise. And the second place, later on, is called the heavenly city. Now, when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, this person also was crucified at the same time next to Jesus. That person asked Jesus to please remember me. And then Jesus looked at him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. Now this word paradise used by Jesus in that context denotes, describe a physical place, a real place, a physical place. Not like a place in the metaverse. Now the millennials, the young people are talking about metaverse almost every day. Now the metaverse is a virtual world. It's different. What Jesus uh, talked about was a real world, a physical place in the universe. Now, um, I would like to share with you a story to show to you that there was someone actually had been there and then returned to give us this testimony. And that person was called the Apostle Paul. Paul, uh, first of all, before Paul became a Christian, he was very, very rebellious. He did not believe. But then afterwards, Jesus Christ appeared to him, and he uh, became a, an apostle to bring forth the gospel to other people. Now, uh, in one incident, according to Paul's record, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 5, the apostle Paul had been there and then returned. Now listen to what he had written down in the Bible. Paul said, he was very humble, right? He said, I know a man. In fact, that was him. He said, I know a man. Well, that's Paul himself. Who 14 years ago, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether he was in the body of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up to paradise. Now, in this context, the word used by Paul for paradise is also a word that is describing or denoting a physical place somewhere in the universe. So this is the same word. So first of all, uh, if you ask where a person will, will go to, when a person pass away, well, the first place is to paradise. Is paradise a nice place? A great place, a wonderful place. Well, Paul had this saying. In the book of Philippians, in the New Testament, Paul told us, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Which is far better. So that means to be with Jesus in the paradise is far better to be here in this world. Now we know the scientists or the US NASA or other private companies are doing a lot of, making a lot of efforts to go to the moon, to colonize the moon, and then maybe later on, the Mars. Well, I really appreciate the efforts. It's not easy to do that. But then, the thing is that the paradise is far better than this world. I do not mean that this world is not good. This world is important for us, for our survival. But when a person, when the days of a person are done, where, where does the person go to? The person will be in paradise. Paul said, 
the paradise, to be in the paradise is far better. So my answer is that from the Bible, according to the Bible, is that when a person passes away, leaving this world, that person will be in paradise. Like what Susie and Swain said, we'll be able to see, to see Hammer again. And as children, he'll give you another hug, lots of hug in heaven. Paradise. Now that's the first place. Now the second place, the Bible had this uh, teaching from a book, the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, talking about the heavenly city. This is a sequence. God will bring Jesus Christ back, and also those who are in paradise. And then Jesus Christ will go and establish that heavenly city. Now, uh, quickly, may I uh, read a couple lines to you. I would like to give you a um, kind of picture of the, holy, of the heavenly city. Revelation 21, 23. The heavenly city does not need the sun or the moon to shine, for the glory of God gives its light. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. And there's a second saying in here, Revelation 21, verse 11. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal, yet at a great high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates. Well, to sum it up, basically, what is said is that the heavenly city is a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. And there's no night in that glorious place. And we we'll all, we'll all will be there. So may God's word give you hope and comfort. May our gracious and loving God comfort you. May God's arm of love wrap around you as you bereave the loss of your loved one, Hammer. Now, at this moment, I will uh, use my Chinese Bible and um, share what I just said in Mandarin. Chiyo 他们的父亲现在去了一个美好的地方啊真的在天上在天堂有一天呢他们的父亲再会呢在天上拥抱他们那刚好呢我准备的信息呢也是讲到一个人呢离开这个地上之后去了哪干什么地方呢圣经呢
，是个实体的、实在的一个地点的这乐园。好像你说你去这个 Wonderland 是一个实在的地点哈、啊，说乐园是个实在的地点，不是一个虚拟的。我们知道现在有 Metaverse 啊，就是虚拟的。宇宙这个是假的，虚拟的嘛，哈，不是实在的。但是这个乐园这个字是一个实在的地点，在天上。那么有个故事，有个人去过又回来，这个是使徒保罗，他呢在哥林多后书十二章这样说，他说我认得一个在基督里的人，这个认得的人就是保罗自己，他谦卑而已，哈。他没说自己，但是其实就是他。他说：“我去过那个地方是十四年前的，就是在写这个《哥伦多后书》之前的十四年前，被提到山城天去。然后他说啊，只有神知道，我认的这个人啊、呃，他说我去过那边。然后第四节，他被提到乐园里，听见隐秘的语言语，是人不可说的。”所以他去过，又回来告诉我们：，哇，这个乐园啊，有声音的，有言语的，是天使的言语的。那么还有就是保罗去过回来，他就有一个这样的结论，在《腓立比书》圣经《腓立比书》这里说，保罗说：“我情愿离世，与基督同在，因为这是好的无比的。”所以保罗说：“乐园是很好的地方啊，我情愿离开这个世界，去到耶稣那边。那你不要误会我，我不说这个世界不不好，我不是这个意思。这个世界对我们太重要了，对不对？这个世界很好，但是当一个人离开这个世界的时候，他去哪？他去了乐园。乐园，乐园呢有耶稣同在，非常美丽，非常好。”然后呢，在乐园里面等。那圣经说，有一天天父要带耶稣回来，连同在乐园里面的人回来，然后呢，去建立一个天上的城市 （Heavenly City）。那圣经有记载吗？有，有一点点的记载。在启示录，启示录呢是圣经最后的一卷书。那么我来翻开读一两处的地方。让各位来呃听一听，让我们稍微知道这个天上的城市是怎么样的啊？地处的经文，起书了二十一章二十三节，他说啊，那个天上的城市啊，里面不用日光，也不需要月光来照的，因为有神的荣耀光照，啊，有神的灯。在里面照，再来一处经文，也是启示录二十一章第十一节。他说啊，这个天上的城啊，有神的荣耀，城的光辉，如同极贵的宝石，好像碧玉，明如水晶，有高大的墙，有十二个门，门上有十二个天使。所以各位啊，圣经有告诉我们，天上是怎么样的。说当我们离开这个世界的时候呢，我们在乐园；以后我们在天上的城市。说刚才呢，我非常感恩呢，我听到苏西跟 Swain 的分享，哎呀，对了，他们讲的对。曾垂祥先生，他们去哪？去了乐园。在天上，非常美丽的地方。有一天，我们要与他见面。说，但愿神给我们盼望，给我们安慰。但愿神他慈爱的手拥抱着我们。因为当我们在这个痛苦的日子的时候，我们最需要的。是上帝的慈爱跟恩典。我们现在一起来祷告好吗
uh, 要是你能够站起来，我们就站起来。I'd like to say the family closing prayer. If you are able, please rise. And I'll say the prayer in two languages. 那我用英文中文来祷告。Our compassionate and gracious Lord Jesus, I lift the family, relatives, and friends of Hammer to you. O、oh、Lord, touch them with your loving hand and help them to find healing in you. Wrap your arm of love around them, that they may not be overly filled with grief. Draw them together in love. That they may be able to stand together as one, to celebrate the life of Hammer. May his legacy carry on in the life of his loved ones. May the fond memories they shared with Hammer remind them of the love that you have for them. O、oh、Lord God, protect the family and fill their hearts. With the assurance of your loving presence, 慈爱的天父上帝，我们的主耶稣基督啊，我现在祷告的时候，把家属、亲戚、朋友都交给你。当我们一起来怀念 Hammer 的时候，郑垂祥先生的时候，我主啊，愿你来用你慈爱的手来医治他们。用你慈爱的手来拥抱他们，叫他们不会在痛苦、忧伤的里面来失去了自己。但愿他们能够手牵手的，家中每一个人手手牵手来纪念 Hammer， 因为他的一辈子就是一个庆典，也让我们以后怀念他。学习他的榜样，神啊，愿你帮助我们，保护我们，更让我们知道你是天天陪伴着我们的慈爱的神。We pray this in Jesus' name. We believe and pray. Amen. 我们这样祷告是奉耶稣基督圣名祷告。And now, may the love of God, the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the comfort and peace. Of the Holy Spirit be with you all from now and evermore. 但愿天父上帝的慈爱，主耶稣基督的恩惠，圣灵宝贵式的感动、安慰与平安，常常与你们同在，从今时直到永永远远。Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Sherry to please come and lead us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Singh family, I'd like to thank everyone for attending the service today, and for those of you who joined us on the live stream, we thank you. As service draws to a near,、um, any of the guests here in the chapel, the family is going to. You'll be given a white envelope that contains a lucky coin and a lucky candy. Um, courtesy of the family, that will be given to you when you exit the chapel today.、Uh, service、uh, draws to a near. Yosvani will play Sayonara, Japanese goodbye, and then he'll lead us out of the chapel, followed by Reverend Lam, the casket, and then I would ask that the family follow him behind. And lastly, Mama Sang, Swain, Susie, thank you for trusting me and allowing me to serve you. Thank you. Please, God. 
Jesus. 